Hey everyone, welcome back to Silas Infotech. Today, in this video, I will migrate the configuration from the Cisco R3850 to the C9300L switch in a real work environment. Whether you're a network pro or just starting, I will break it down into quick, easy steps. Alright, so why upgrade from the trusty R3850 to the newer C9300L? In short, better speed, more power, and future ready features. Bandwidth boost, 1G to 10G uplinks more power over Ethernet, faster stacking speeds better security, enhanced with MixSec encryption the C9300L is faster, smarter, and stronger. It's built for today's high demand networks whether you're running cloud services, automation, or heavy IOT devices, more power, more features, less downtime. Let's connect the R3850 switch using the console cable and putty terminal editor. Before backing up, let's review the configuration of the Cisco R3850 switch using the show run config command. Since I'm working on a real network environment switch, I will not reveal the configuration to you for privacy and security reasons. Let's attach a USB stick to the Cisco R3850 switch. A pop-up message will be displayed on the screen. The show version command on a Cisco switch provides detailed information about the device's hardware and software. This command is essential for network administrators to gather critical information about the switch's status and configuration. Now, let's back up running config to USB file using copy running config USB flash. The command copy running config USB flash 0 on a Cisco switch is used to save the current running configuration to a USB flash drive. Ensure you successfully backed up the configuration file to a USB stick. If needed, power down the old R3850 switch and remove it from the rack. Now slide in the C9300L. Since this is a very new switch, we don't have any prior configuration, we can review it using show run command. The logging synchronous command on Cisco switches is used to manage how system messages like syslog messages are displayed on the console. By default, these messages can interrupt your command input, making it difficult to type commands without being disrupted. When you enable logging synchronous, it ensures that any unsolicited messages are displayed on a new line, allowing you to continue typing your command without interruption. The host name on a Cisco switch is a unique identifier that helps distinguish it from other devices in the network. Configuring the host name is one of the first steps in setting up a switch. Here's how you can do it. The clock time zone command on Cisco switches is used to set the time zone for the system clock. This is important for ensuring that logs and other time dependent features reflect the correct local time. The service timestamps log date time exact local time show time zone command on Cisco switches is used to configure the format of timestamps for log messages. This command ensures that log messages include detailed time information which is crucial for accurate event tracking and troubleshooting. Let's break down of the command. Service timestamps log date time enables timestamps on log messages. The service password encryption command on Cisco switches is used to encrypt all plaintext passwords in the configuration file. This helps to prevent unauthorized users from easily viewing passwords if they gain access to the configuration file. Let's add the user on the Cisco switch. A user login on a Cisco switch refers to the process of authenticating users who want to access the switch's command line interface CLI. This is done to ensure that only authorized personnel can configure or manage the switch. 
Here are the key components username and password. Users are required to enter a username and password to gain access. These credentials can be configured locally on the switch or verified against an external authentication server privilege levels. Cisco switches support different privilege levels, which determine the commands a user can execute. For example, a user with privilege level 15 has full administrative rights. A loopback interface on a Cisco switch is a virtual interface that is always up and active once configured. It is not tied to any physical port and can be used for various purposes, such as testing, management, and routing protocols. Here are some key points about loopback interfaces stability. Since loopback interfaces are always up, they provide a reliable IP address that can be used for management and monitoring. Routing protocols, they are often used as router IDIS in routing protocols like OSPF and BGP. Testing, useful for testing network connectivity and configurations without relying on physical interfaces. Here are the steps to configure a loopback interface on a Cisco switch. Now let's jump to our main topics configuration migration. Before copying the configuration file to the Cisco switch, rename the config file name if needed. Then attach the USB kit to the Cisco switch. Let's copy the config file to Cisco flash memory using copy USB flash 0 colon CONFIG file name running config. The command copy USB flash 0 config file name running config on a Cisco switch is used to transfer files from a USB flash drive to the switch's internal flash memory. Ensure that the config file is copied successfully to NVRAM. If you found this guide helpful, don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe for more tech tutorials. Got any questions, drop them in the comments below and I'll be happy to help. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.